Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to another video ranking every ever after high doll. We are getting closer towards the end here. We've passed the halfway mark. We are on part three today. So I would encourage you to go and watch parts one and two if you haven't seen those already, just because they do kind of naturally go before part three. In part two, I did say that I think it's gonna be four parts instead of the three I originally intended for this series to be. And that is going to be the case. So we're doing part three today. And then I promised we were gonna finish it up in part four. I won't make this like five parts. That would be too many. There's just a lot more dolls than I expected. So we are going to be going through them today. As usual, this is just my opinion. So if you guys disagree, it's totally chill. It's not a big deal. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I am also coming at this from the viewpoint of someone who has never seen Ever After High as a show. And I never got into the dolls when they first came out. So it's relatively objective of how I'm looking at this stuff. And then as per usual, if you guys do find yourself enjoying the ranking as we go through, if you could give this video a like, that's very helpful to me. And if you're new here and you enjoy your time, definitely subscribe so you can see more. But with that out of the way, just like all of the other ranking videos, we have a lot of dolls to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so just like with all of my other ranking videos, I am using Procreate to do this. And then as a recap, in case you didn't see parts one and two, the tiers that I'm using for the Ever After High rankings are Queen, Princess, Lord, Commoner, Peasant, and Banished because they're fun and thematic. So just, you know, to give you guys an idea um, of what parts one and two looked like, like I said, in case you didn't see those yet, here is what part one was looking like. Pretty even spread slightly more positive than negative on there. And then we did part two on the same canvas. So this is what everything was looking like after part two. Getting a little worse, but still not terrible. Now I definitely don't have room on here to do parts three and four, like on the same thing. So we are going to be kind of starting over, I guess you could say a blank slate here, but I did want to be able to show you what parts one and two looked like because I've been saying this since part one, things are going to start to go downhill, and we saw that a little bit in the last video. This video is going to get pretty rough, so just a fair warning there. Uh, we are going to start off, though, with easily the best doll of the video, and honestly, one of the better dolls overall. This is Royally Ever After Apple White, and I have no notes. She's so beautiful. The colors, the print, all of the details, like her scepter, everything looks so so good. I have not one negative thing to say about this doll. So she's obviously going to go into Queen. And uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to be the only one there for the rest of this ranking. <laughs> Next up we have Heartstruck Cupid, who is very cute, but something just feels a little bit off to me. I don't know. I think it might be that in other iterations of Cupid, we've seen her wings have a lot of detail where like the... Um, indented portions of the sculpt are darker so it really really pops and there's a lot of painted detail to her wings and obviously there's detail in like the flowers and stuff on her wings here but I think that might be it is that it's just a different look for Cupid's wings than we usually get that being said she still does look amazing like all of the floral prints and all the layers and stuff are really really cool so she's still good she's just not quite queen material for me she's gonna go into princess <laughs> <laughs> immediate downhill. Uh, so these are two budget Apple White dolls. You'll notice they are wearing the exact same outfit, just the items are kind of recolored. And then this one has the reboot face. So we're going to start seeing a couple of those dolls in here. Neither of these is good though. Like it's not just the reboot face. <laughs> I know for Monster High, the sweeter reboot faces were really bad for a lot of people. I didn't think that they were always terrible, but sometimes they definitely were. Just because Monster High isn't always a franchise that like works well with cuteness, and especially in G2 when you paired that with the lower quality, it was just pretty bad sometimes. I do think that Ever After High, since it's more fairy tale oriented, does better with the sweeter faces, but I can obviously understand that if you were a fan of like the original on the left here, suddenly seeing faces like the one on the right, not good. And then also I do think there was a dip in quality again. So like, there's a lot of components there. Anyway, I don't know why I like went into that whole thing. Neither of these is good. In fact, they're both pretty terrible and they're both going and banished. Then we have some budget Ashlyn Ella's. Pretty much the same story. <laughs> same outfit, slight recolors here. It is interesting the stock photo for this version because her head looks like it's like squished too far down on the neck. Like, you can see the difference here. 
She definitely looks like she got a little squished, but even if she weren't, I don't think that would save her. I just really hate the molded on clothing. I think the way the skirt is sewn on to it doesn't look great, and there's not even any painted detail. These are just really bad to me, so they're gonna go into Banished. Budget Ravens! Again, same situation here. <laughs> um, less of a recolor on this. The whole outfit seems a little bit darker, but I don't know if that's just the stock photo lighting. Again, I, I just... I hate both of them. <laughs> Banished. See what I mean by this is going to be a worse video? <laughs> okay, then we have two budgets. We have Maddie Hatter and then Daring Charming. I don't know if this was his first doll because I'm not going in order of doll release. I'm going in order of like this little database list that I have. But it's not a good way for me to be introduced to him. That's maybe the worst doll we've come across yet. Almost everything is molded on. It's really awful. I feel like it would have been cool to see his design in really high quality because there's another daring coming up and he's a little bit better but not like great. It's just kind of sad and then Maddie obviously does not look like herself, at least not enough like herself. She's got the teapots on her skirt. Everything else is really bad though. So shocker, these two are both also going in banished. <laughs> Okay, this one is not great, but it's like slightly less horrific. I didn't put the name on there. This is the hairstyling Holly O'Hare, I think, because I think Poppy's the one with the short hair. Mm. You know, I said not as bad, but I think that was just because she came with stuff. So I was like, oh, at least she's got some things happening. But otherwise, she's pretty much like all the other budget dolls that I have been talking about. So you all already know she's banished. Okay, then we have the Tricastalon dolls, which are like at least a smidge above <laughs> the uh, molded on plastic that we've been seeing. So this is Cerise. I like that she still has her hood. I wish she had a cape because I'm just a sucker for capes. I think that the shoes are fine. I just hate the logo on the shirt, but I get that it's thematic, I guess. I don't know. I don't love her. I think she only looks okay to me because I've just been looking at the molded on clothing and so I'm like, oh my god, it's real clothing. But I don't think it's actually good. I'm gonna put her in peasant. Then we've got Tricastalon Hunter, who looks very similar to his original release to me. Like, obviously, I know there's different colors and stuff, but I don't know, he just doesn't look that exciting. I appreciate the detail. I find this very interesting because I obviously don't know the show, so I don't know if Hunter's like super, super important. But he gets more detail than any of the other Ever After High Boys. And it's just very interesting to see. I still don't think it's, like, super. I'm going to put him in Peasant also. And then lastly, we have Lizzie. And this is a hard one for me because she's got the color scheme of her core doll, who I love. But I'm not, like, a, the biggest Wonderland fan. So this is very thematic, it seems, to Wonderland. I feel like if I liked... That sort of stuff, if I was like a huge Alice in Wonderland fan, this would be awesome. I'm just not really. But I do appreciate the design. I think she's got some fun accessories. So we're going to let her be in commoner. Okay, then we have a book party ginger bread house. I don't know. I love to read, so you'd think that any line that's like themed around books would immediately be right up my alley. And I do like some things. I think that the like tied together books that she's carrying is really cute and I actually think that the necklace with the open book on it is like kind of quirky and funny. My biggest thing though is that as the name implies <laughs> Ginger Bread House is supposed to be a sweets themed doll so on the one hand as someone who's not a fan of sweets themed dolls I do kind of like her more but also I feel like this could be anybody like this doesn't read Ginger to me. I know she's got like the ice cream cone around her ankle I like the molding and drips and like there's some frosting on her um, dress. I, it just doesn't really read ginger to me, but it's not outright offensive. So we're going to put her in commoner as well. Uh, then also from book party, we have Katie Cheshire. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I like her shoes. I wish there was more painted detail on them. I like her cat ears because she doesn't always have those. But ultimately it's just kind of boring. Like, her other dolls are just more exciting to me. She's going to go in commoner as well, because, again, it's not, like, bad, but it's just not super. Then we have Lizzie from the, what did I call it, 
book party. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to call it book club and I was like, that's not right. I like her a little more, but I think it's just because I'm really partial to Lizzie's original design. And I think that I like the color scheme because it's very similar to that. A little bit lighter, um, but I like the card imagery that she's got going on here better than I liked like the sporty imagery in the Tricastalon one. I don't know. I, like, I know she's not super detailed. I feel like this would be great if she had some sort of sleeve to her dress. Um, but I do like her. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and put her into Lord, which might be generous, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, then we have Dragon Games, Darling, Charming. This is a good doll. Like, this is a really good one. I really hate the pattern on the leggings. Ever After High just had some crazy leggings, and I feel like I don't always like the silhouette that the leggings give with the Ever After High dolls, but I do think that if they were solid colors, I would like them a lot more. I just don't like this print clashing with the print on her shirt. I think that's just a lot going on there. But I love all the armor she's got going on. Her face looks nice. And the hair colors are beautiful. Like, this is really good except for the leggings. So she's going to go into Princess. Because honestly, if she had different leggings, she might have been the second queen of this video. Okay, then we have both Holly and Poppy from Dragon Games. I do think that these might be my favorite iterations of these characters, but for some reason I just still can't connect to them. I have no idea what it is. Like, I, I don't know why these characters just don't vibe with me. Again, I'm not a fan of the leggings on Poppy. I do think that Holly's are definitely better. Out of the two, I think Holly is better for sure. I just like her colors a little bit more. But on the other side, I like Poppy's silhouette better because I think that the way this little trailing bit is sewn on is kind of odd. I think that they can both go into Lord. I think that's fair. Because honestly, the designs are pretty solid. Alrighty, next up we have Mira Shards. And like, I do like her, but also she just seems like Raven Queen in a slightly different font. <laughs> She's another one where I absolutely cannot pinpoint what her like fairy tale is supposed to be. I'm not the utmost authority on fairy tales, so like that doesn't necessarily mean much, but I just can't personally tell. That being said, I do like her outfit. I don't know, it's interesting because she still has the very round face, and for me, Raven looks a little bit dissonant to have that like super edgy aesthetic with the very round face. It just doesn't feel quite right. But I do honestly think that Mira is rocking it better, and I love her hair color. I think that's so fun and pretty. She's going to get to pop up into Princess. Then we have Raven Queen from the Dragon Games, and yeah, she's just less cool to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I really like the coloration on her top. It almost reminds me of like an oil slick or like peacock feathers. I like that hint of green in there. I think that's actually very, very pretty. The teal in her hair I think is also really nice. Maybe it's something with the face. I'm zooming in a lot, so like it doesn't really show her face, but I feel like their face-ups are different enough to where Mira looks better than Raven to me. I do think the armor is fun and interesting. The hair, like, accessories with the chains, it's pretty cool. I think she can go into Lord. Then we have Apple from the Dragon Games, and she just doesn't look as exciting as anyone else. I still was willing to give it to her, because, like, in general, I've liked most of the Apple White dolls. However... She does have printed on quote unquote leggings as opposed to actual pants. And I really dislike that. I think she came in a two pack with a dragon. This is also probably a good time to say that I won't be including any like dragons or um, they're not called enchantimals in Ever After High, but they're little dolls that look similar to enchantimals. I'm not including any of those in these rankings. So you won't see the dragon, but I think she came in a two-pack with a dragon. So I'm guessing that that's why they went a little more budget on this doll. But it just immediately lowers her for me. And I also really don't like the crazy array of metals here. I know that her legs aren't supposed to look metallic, or at least I'm assuming that they aren't, but they kind of do. Then we have the gold, which I think is good for Apple, as the belt. A pretty dark, can't tell if it's bronze or silver color. And then a lighter kind of bronzy color. It's just a lot happening. She's going to have to go into peasant, which pains me. Because I feel like that actually could be a cool design. I like the silhouette a lot. But no. Uh, then we have Birthday Bash Blondie. I don't even remember what video it was in. But I remember at some point complaining about this Blondie doll. Obviously, I have no context, okay? But her name is Blondie. And she has teal hair. 
Now, it was explained to me that that's because in the birthday batch, they all got, like, different colors of hair. But her name's literally Blondie. <laughs> Come on. Other than that, though, I actually don't think this is bad. I wish it was more detailed because I love the mold of these shoes. I think that's super cute. And for once, she has a very cohesive color palette. If you saw parts one and two, you know that I've been complaining literally nonstop about her having a really non-cohesive color palette. So this is nice to see. Except for the hair, it's a little bit off. Weirdly enough, even though I've been complaining because I don't love bright yellow hair on her, I think it would have matched better. <laughs> even so, though, this is pretty pretty okay, so I'm going to put her into Lord. Then we have Cupid from the Birthday Bash, who didn't get a hair color change. I just said they all did, but it's like some of them did, some of them didn't. I don't know. This is definitely Cupid going downhill to me. I like the sculpt of her wings, that's very pretty and fun, but there's not really any detail in there. The lattice on her dress looks like it's printed on, and I don't love the print for her skirt. I just feel like there's a way to do Cupid with like hearts and kind of like romance themes in a way that looks more mature. And this looks very like kitschy, like childlike to me. I just don't, I just don't love it. I think she's gonna go into peasant. <laughs> Then we have Duchess from the Birthday Bash, and I actually love her with this hair color. I think this is very pretty on her. I don't think that the outfit is complete, you know? Like, it just, it doesn't feel like there's enough. And it's so sad, again, because it doesn't seem like a bad start. I just wish that there was something else going on here. Some sleeves or some tights. Something. It's not terrible. But it isn't complete to me. I think she's going to go into commoner. Okay, Cedar from Birthday Bash. There's no reason I should love her this much, but she is weirdly so pretty to me. I am obsessed with this hair color on her. It looks like she has some tinsel in there, and it just looks so pretty on her. I also like this rope braid at the top. That's so nice. And also, she seems like she got a more fleshed out design for her dress. You know, there's a couple of different materials on there, a couple of different layers. She's got sleeves with some detail. This is a great cedar. Like, this might be my favorite cedar, which is so silly because, like, there have definitely been other ones that are more detailed, but I really love this hair color on her, and I, I don't know why. But she is going to go up to Princess just for that. Okay, then we have Rosabella and her couple of other dolls that I've seen thus far I have not been a huge fan of. I don't know, something about the color scheme I just didn't love. I like this a lot better, actually. Um, the blonde hair, I feel like, suits her a little bit better. Weirdly, I don't hate, hate the printed-on detailing. Obviously, it'd be cool if it were, like, actual bows, but it doesn't look the worst. I s I'm still not, like, obsessed with her, but I think she's better than any other Rosabella that I've seen so far, so she's gonna go in commoner. Then we have a Carnival Date 2-pack with Alistair and Bunny Blanc. They're pretty detailed, especially considering where we're at with this. Like, as I was scrolling through the list, most of them didn't look super detailed, so, like, it's... Kind of refreshing to get to see this. Alistair's outfit is unoffensive, but also, like, anybody could wear that, you know? Like, it doesn't say anything to me about his character. Bunny Blanc looks okay, but there's a lot of patterns and colors that I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of. Honestly, I think they're both gonna go in peasant. They just don't appeal to me personally. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this is... This is pretty rough. We're on the last, um, like, line for this video, and it's not great. Uh, this is Epic Winter, and this is Apple White. I don't, I don't love this. I loved about Apple White's color story that it was, like, yellow, gold, white, and red, right? Like, those were kind of her core colors. I don't at all like the addition of the pink in here. It feels unnecessary and it just doesn't look as good to me. Um, yeah, I don't like this. I feel like the gold is very, very dark. I hate the molded in, like, details for the tights. You could have just left that off. Like, you didn't need to do that. The sculpt for the boots is fine, but... Oh, God. She's really bad, and I don't want to rank her this low, but she has to go and vanish. Like, I am upset looking at that. Next up from Epic Winter is Ashlyn, who, if anything, manages to fare worse, which is so sad because I've loved some of Ashlyn's dolls, but I feel like she has a very 
pastel or desaturated color story usually and this brightness is just very very jarring i have all of the same complaints that i had with apple pretty much except also i hate that the bottom like circle of fur goes all the way around her dress and then the top one stops halfway like it's only on the front that looks hideous and they even showed it in the stock photo that's what i think is like even funnier because i i guess it's good for them to show it because then people won't be surprised and upset by it but also you're not doing yourself any favors at least to me as far as trying to sell this doll banished okay epic winter blondie might be the best doll from epic winter i just think she pulls it off better than anyone else the boots look a little clunky to me but i do think that this like coat dress situation actually looks pretty cute. It looks like the fur goes all the way around and it's also on her hood. I like the panel of fabric in the front. It would have been so cute to get actual buttons, but like I gotta withhold that expectation here. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that she's terrible and she even gets to go up to commoner. Then we've got Briar and I, I just don't like this. I just don't. I haven't been a huge fan of Briar this, like, entire ranking series. But this is doing her real dirty. Banished. Then we have a new character. This is Crystal Winter. And, whew, I... I feel like this could have been kind of cool. But it just really missed the mark. I like the idea of her skin tone. It's very pearlescent. And it's just an interesting color that I feel like you don't really see on dolls a ton, but I do think that with all of the green, it makes her look a little bit sickly, and that's probably not, like, what you want your doll to look like, at least for a fairy tale, you know, like, maybe a zombie in Monster High, you want them to look sickly, but this is not doing it for me. I think it would have been way better if she had more colors, like the colors in her skirt. I think her skin tone would have looked a lot better with those sorts of colors. We still have molded on stuff, and it's just pretty bad to me so sadly she is also banished next up we've got maddie and again it's really bad she's got like the top hat headband which i guess is pretty maddie and she's got some like teapots on her skirt but i don't know it leans so far into like the winter aspect that it loses a lot of maddie and i just don't like it banished we're almost done <laughs> So this is Daring, and he got a little bit more detail in this one. You can see the shirt. He's got a little bit more detail in this doll. Not much. Not enough to save him. He still has the heinous molded-on pants and the molded-on hair. Oh, this is just... It's really bad. It's really bad, guys. I can't even, like, tap the things I need to tap because I'm getting distressed. Almost done. Back to Rosabella. Back to her original color scheme, and I just like it less. I just don't think that it looks as good. I don't know. I don't like this random pop of like a greenish blue at her collar with the necklace because it doesn't fit in anywhere else. Banished. And then lastly, we are on a second rendition of Crystal Winter, who I think was still part of the Epic Winter line, so she's rounding out this video. I like the colors a lot better. I, I do like the colors a lot better, and this just proves my point that if you use the right colors, that skin tone could be really pretty, although I can't tell from this image, because she came with a playset, so like, I had to zoom in really far. I can't tell if she's still super pearlescent or not, but I love the colors for this so much better. However, the actual outfit is like the budget outfit with the sewn circle skirt and the uh, molded on top, and it just looks really bad, so she's also banished. <laughs> So yeah, guys, this is the very grim way that we are leaving part three. I've been warning y'all since the beginning, so like, <laughs> y'all knew this was coming. But yeah, this is pretty bad. We have the one in Queen. Apple, White, and Queen saved us here. We've got a few in Princess. And even the Lord ones aren't bad, but like, we definitely start going downhill. And there's so many in Banished, guys. And I know there's going to be so many more in part four. So yeah, this is a little bit of a rough one, but this is where we're ending it. <laughs> As I said earlier, I would be very curious to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about the dolls that I talked about today. We did also get into some of the reboot dolls with the budget dolls and then also the Epic Winter line. So I'd be really curious to know a little bit more about how like Ever After High fans felt about the reboot because I know a lot about how Monster High fans felt about the G2 reboot, but I wasn't really in the Ever After High fandom. Like I'm 
I'm still not. I'm just kind of tipping my toes into the, <laughs> the dolls here. But I would be very curious to see how it was received there. Because I do think, again, like I said, the faces being nicer, I think could have been received a little bit better in that setting. But it's the budget, man. It's the worst outfits with the lower budget that just gets you every time. So very fascinated to hear about that. Um, but yes, that was part three of my ranking of all of the Ever After High dolls. Definitely be looking forward to part four, the final part so we can round out this series. Kind of sad that like we'll probably be ending on not a great note, but in any case though, I do hope you guys were able to enjoy the video. I do have my social medias, my TikTok, Instagram, and I also have an Amazon wish list linked in the description down below if you would like to support me in other places. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys!